more than a presentation, I just want to remind all of you that these lectures are organized jointly by by the Department of Physics and the Department of Electrical Engineering and uh, Information Technologies, DAT, in the framework of the two-year master's in data science, the Laurea Magistral in data science, which together we started uh, last year, and that I must say it's proving to be quite successful. So I wish you good luck, and I leave you, uh, and I leave uh, the mic to Flora, who is organizing and coordinating these lectures. Thank you very much, Flora, for your work, and uh, I am looking forward to listening. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Professor Longo. You you make all this possible. You are the the real the real coordinator of this Thank you, but of without this all my collaborators, I will be. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And uh, it is uh, my great pleasure to introduce uh, uh, Serena Pelosi, researcher of the University of Salerno. Um, uh, her talk uh, is um, hashtag Andrà tutto bene, Images, Text, uh, Emoticons, Geodata in Sentiment Analysis Pipeline. Uh, Serena uh, is a researcher uh, in text analysis and uh, natural language processing at the University of Salerno, uh, where she got uh, her PhD in computational linguistics. Uh, she is authors, author of many publications and uh, participates uh, in, uh, in different projects, uh, both nationally and internationally projects. Uh, please, Serena. Uh, um, I shut down my my webcam because we we share uh, um, Google uh, we share uh, Teams account and uh, um, Serena you can start. Thank you to everyone to be here. Thank you, uh, Flora. Thank you, Professor Longo, to be to to invite me uh, at this um, cycle of uh, lecture that I'm going to to present here. Um, investigates uh, Instagram user sentiment, uh, which have been narrated during the, the lockdown period in Italy, uh, which have been present by the COVID pandemia. The study that we'll present here um, is based uh, uh, on the analysis of bold posts, which have been published on Instagram and um, that we collected under the Italian uh, Andrà tutto bene in the days of May 4, May 20, 28, and June 3 of the 2020. This research has been carried out um, over a view of, on a national, regional, and provincial scale. Okay, I send uh, the presentation to Flora uh, and I ask her to, to share it if, if, she, um, if, if she is listening. Okay, in our work, uh, Instagram posts are composed by several kinds of languages. Uh, so uh, we attempt to, attempted to analyze uh, basically all the languages that we uh, uh, found out uh, on Instagram. Uh, we um, applied NLP techniques for the analysis of uh, basic text, Unstructured, unstructured text, so uh, namely uh, captions, com comments, hashtag, but we um, converted also emoji and uh, images into texts, and then we analyzed them uh, through uh, NLP strategies. The aim of, uh, the, the aim of our work has been, uh, therefore, to design a set of procedures um, able to reveal the different polarity trends for each one uh, for what for each one of these languages, and to propose a unique measure to uh, describe them. This measure this measure can show the sentiment which expressed uh, which is expressed by the text by the posts um, ex uh, intended in the broad semiotic meaning. So. Uh, including all uh, its components. 
the, the methodology uh, that we proposed uh, has been based on a fully automatic uh, natural language processing pipeline, uh, which basically, as uh, I anticipated, uh, includes also the images analysis procedure. Uh, the output that we produced is an, an interactive dashboard, which is able to explore the sentiment analysis value uh, about every single kind of text and the synthesis of all of them. So, thanks to a system of uh, interactions and filters, the observation is led by the images features, uh, such as different kind of spaces and different kind of photo subjects. The geographical data collected enable the analysis of several dimensions with an overview observation based on the regional scale. The chance is to focus on the deeper level of uh, the Italian provinces. The choices is most by the Italian uh, DPCM published on 24, Ma 24 March 2020, in which um, it has been declared the parcel autonomy of the regions. All the information composing the data set, captions, hashtags, so, uh, emojis, images, uh, have been automatically put in relation one another and visualized in an interactive dashboard. The phenomenon can be observed through a system of filters, uh, zooms, and, in, and uh, interdependent interactions. The result is uh, a topography of feelings, moods, and needs expressed on the Instagram platform uh, during the, the lockdown. Okay. So. Oh. Let me show the outline of the of the work that I'm that I'm being presented. So um, I speak about the I spoke about the, the work on uh, sentiment analysis on Instagram. So uh, we uh, will step back just for a moment. Um, just the time to explain how the methodology works. So, I will present here a lexicon-based approach for sentiment analysis purposes um, uh, designed for the Italian language, which is able to uh, go through the analysis of verbal, of both verbal and visual languages. So, I will briefly describe the sentiment analysis pipeline that we use it to um, work on Instagram posts during the lockdown period. Then I will uh, deepen the, I will focus on the analysis of uh, all the languages that we exploited, namely text, hashtags, and emoji, emojis. And then in the end, I will um, explain how we use the information that we uh, find out in uh, images in order to uh, filter out results, in order to uh, uh, make the three uh, levels of analysis communicate one another. So, um, as we anticipated, uh, Instagram posts are composed of several dimensions. Uh, visual data that uh, include emojis and images, which are dominant in this uh, in this uh, social network in this uh, social network, and then both unstructured and structured data. Uh, so, sentiment analysis tools are applied directly to uh, caption, comments, uh, hashtags, and emoji, and emojis. Uh, uh, images and emojis are used to uh, classify the contents, so analyzed, and then the structured data are used to, are used uh, in order to to filter the information and to uh, provide. Uh, visualization able to uh, discover aspects of the phenomena 
which cannot be seen by uh, the analysis uh, uh, only uh, focused on, uh, on textual uh, data and, and uh, unstructured data. So, um, because sentiment analysis tools uh, can be applied directly to, to texts, namely uh, captions and comments, uh, the other um, the other languages need to be um, firstly preprocessed. So uh, images and emojis are basically converted to text. Hashtag needs a uh, segmentation phase, and then all the um, all the structures, all the languages are uh, follows the, the uh, follow the the traditional preprocessing pipeline, uh, namely the, the tokenization, the post-tagging, and the lemmatization. <coughs> so, uh, once the, uh, all the languages are uh, preprocessed, uh, the, the natural language processing pipeline can start. Uh, so, um, it regards uh, the extraction of um, items from sentiment lexicons. Um, the, 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 the difficult activity of uh, taking context into account, and then the uh, comparison among the results obtained from the analysis of all the languages, and uh, the filtering of the information through uh, the categories uh, extracted from uh, images with uh, guide all the all the analysis. So, I as anticipated, I will uh, uh, step back uh, just for one second, and I will I, I will focus on uh, some definitional uh, issues, which are uh, basically um, shared among the the. The, this, the data science community. I just briefly give some definition. With, sent, with, with sentiment analysis, I mean uh, the computational treating, uh, treatment of opinions, sentiments, and emotions, which are uh, expressed in text. So I, uh, as, as, linguist, as a linguist, I focus on the uh, linguistic expression and uh, automatic analysis. Um, yeah, the, the sentiment analysis um, represents a really active NLP field that includes a lot of specific, uh, specific research challenge. In this work, uh, I will focus basically on uh, sentiment and uh, subjectivity classification. Uh, as regards definition of opinions, I refer to the loop definition of opinion, uh, which uh, identify uh, five uh, elements of interest in the definition of the, the opinion, uh, namely the subject, the feature of uh, the, the object, the features uh, of the object, uh, their positive or negative orientation, uh, the, the person who expressed the opinion, which is called the opinion order, and then uh, the time which the opinion is expressed. So in the analysis of those Instagram posts, we uh, try to automatically compute all these dimensions in order to uh, describe the phenomenon analyzed. So the task uh, uh, on which we focus is, uh, uh, is the sentiment polarity classification. Uh, uh, which uh, in which the the whole document is uh, considered this is, is considered to be the basic information unit and so uh, it is detected the document level uh, semantic orientation of uh, of the text so our work um, is grounded on on uh, a methodology which is which is based on a, on a lexicon based approach. Uh, to grant this task on a lexicon means uh, uh, to hypothesize that the polarity of opinion words, or better, 
of uh, sentences or phrases in which they occur can be considered indicators of the polarity of the documents in which the words and the expression are, are, are contained. Um, as regard literature, we can say that the, uh, the most commonly used uh, semantic orientation indicators are uh, adjectives or adjective phrases. But recently, it became really common the use of adverbs, uh, nouns, and uh, verbs as well. Uh, obviously, hand-built lexicon are definitely more accurate than uh, uh, the automatically built ones. Uh, nevertheless, the manually draw up a dictionary is considered uh, a very time-consuming activity. Uh, that is why uh, it can be noticed in literature the presence of a very large number of studies on uh, automatic polarity lexicon creation and uh, propagation. Uh, in this work, um, we propose uh, a lexicon um, semi-automatically built for the Italian language, uh, which is called Sentita. Sentita is a, a sentiment lexical database that directly aims to apply the lexicon grammar theory um, by starting from its basic hypothesis. Uh, um, that the minimum semantic units are the elementary sentences, not words. So, in this work, uh, the lemmas are collected into dictionaries, electronic dictionaries, and their semantic orientation are systematically recalled and computed into specific contexts through the use of local grammars. So, we use these resources also, also for, for sentiment analysis of hashtag and emojis. But the main difference uh, from our uh, resource and uh, the other resources uh, that we can find uh, in literature or in the internet is the fact that uh, uh, words are, not, are, are never considered in isolation. And uh, they, are, they are grouped together uh, not just considering their semantic relations, but also considering their syntactic uh, properties. So, as we can see in this slide, um, adjectives, uh, verbs, compounds, and frozen sentences uh, from these dictionaries, um, which is machine readable, uh, have been uh, uh, manually uh, collected and annotated, uh, while nouns and adverbs have been automatically uh, derived from the adjectives and verb lists uh, using a, a morphological uh, strategy that uh, we are going to discuss uh, afterward. So, uh, let's see. Uh, how we work, how we work on the resource manual annotation. So basically, um, many lexical resources uh, are, are already available for the Italian for the English language. While uh, for the Italian language, there is a very large lack uh, of evaluating and, free, and freely available word, word lists. Um, there are some uh, uh, fully automatically created resources, but they are really um, uh, different from our resource that has been uh, uh, manually annotated. And then uh, also with regards uh, for, for what concerns the, the parts uh, which have been uh, uh, automatically created, uh, they have been uh, automatic, uh, fully checked by uh, humans annotator. So, in order to um, uh, define a tag set for our resources, we use uh, four tags, which are uh, positive, pos, negative, neg, uh, intense, uh, which is the Italian word forte, and uh, uh, weak, the Italian word debole. 
So uh, mixing together all these tags, we uh, obtained two scale, an, evalu an evaluation scale and a strength scale. The first one ranges from uh, minus, minus three uh, to plus three uh, from the uh, from the strongly negative uh, value to the strongly positive one. Uh, while the strength scale uh, regards uh, downtoning and uh, intensifying uh, issues. Uh, the verbs chosen uh, for our sentiment lexical are uh, psychological verbs which belong to uh, the lexicon grammar uh, classifications. Uh, then the, the nominalization of these predicates have been used to manually build the sentiment dictionary of part of the nouns included in our lists. Then in the end, uh, our our resource for the sentiment analysis includes also uh, more than uh, more than 500 uh, Italian frozen sentences, which contain adjectives, uh, which have been uh, annotated and formalized. Uh, here we present just uh, uh, some example, which have been classified uh, according to their syntactic structures. Um, they have been uh, un, uh, formalized to dictionary and uh, grammar pair. As we can see, uh, our local grammar, uh, which uh, allow uh, the, the possibility to take in account the syntactic context according to uh, the information contained in the dictionary, are uh, in the shape of a finite state automata. Uh, as we can see in this slide, frozen sentences are, uh, yes, lexicalized and so inserted into the lexical resources, but they uh, present uh, uh, some level of uh, lexical and syntactic variability and then have a, a particular uh, influence on the polarity of the adjective they contain. In some cases, uh, the, the presence of uh, uh, and adjectives into a uh, frozen sentence make the, uh, the adjective uh, assume uh, an, a more intense uh, polarity. In some cases, um, it happens that uh, neutral, uh, neutral adjectives uh, obtain uh, a polarity, a new polarity when inserted, when occurring into a frozen sentence. Uh, there are cases in which, instead, um, ironic uh, frozen sentences, such as uh, the one uh, Mary is as agile as a lead cat, uh, that means that Mary is not agile, um, basically negate the uh, polarity of the objective that, that occur into, into the frozen sentence. So, uh, let's see how, how worked the, the, research, the, the resource population. So, uh, how, will, uh, how we expanded the, the dictionary. So, um, again, among the, the methods proposed in literature, uh, we proposed and we tested a methodology um, which was based on, on, uh, on a morphological strategy. Excuse me, uh, can I ask a question? Yes, yes of course. Of course. Um, which uh, uh, inputs uh, um, uh, you should um, uh, give uh, to this machine, uh, this strategy, uh, to obtain uh, the score of, uh, of phrases? Yes. yes. So let's see an example. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I, I may I ask you to turn off the microphone because I okay, okay, okay. can hear my own voice. Yeah, okay, yeah. thank you. Okay. So, 
we basically have uh, a dictionary uh, in which uh, uh, the, the words are endowed with uh, a specific polarity. That is the one that is uh, uh, indicated in the evaluation scale. When the sentences occur uh, in this sense, score, uh, this score, uh, and, uh, this polarity is uh, yes. uh, uh, assigned uh, manually, right? Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. It has been uh, yes. The dictionary has been uh, uh, manually annotated, but by three uh, different annotator. Um, so. Um, we discovered basically that the uh, more intense uh, words such as uh, wonderful or disastrous uh, are the words in which the, um, the annotators uh, have a stronger agreement, obviously. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, may I, at this point, sorry, the, usually we ask questions yes. at the end, but since we have a start, okay. uh, I, I want to join in. I have just a doubt. I mean, obviously, you have no way to separate ironic meanings from real meanings. For instance, I could say, oh, I mean, this thing is truly wonderful, but in an ironic sense. Yes. But you have no way to discriminate it, right? Um, yeah. Uh, if you just work on uh, textual contents, uh, it is very difficult to discover this this kind of uh, ironic uh, meanings but uh, when you when we come put together uh, images hashtag uh, texts and uh, emojis we can uh, find uh, some cues of uh, ironic meaning if we uh, find very different scores for example, uh, between uh, emojis and text. So, for example, if you if you say uh, this uh, this movie is uh, is uh, very funny, and then uh, you put an emoji of a, a face who cries, then uh, uh, the the different score, the very different, the very distant score that has the text and the the the, emo the content uh, which is um, vehiculated by the emoji, then uh, it it could be a cue of the of the sarcastic or of the ironic uh, intent of the writer, but obviously the uh, the recall and the, the precision of a system uh, who check uh, irony and sarcasm are very, very low. That, that, um, so the, the precision is uh, uh, almost really close to the 50%. So <laughs> um, this kind of systems are very, very uh, difficult to, to, to manage. We just treated sarcasm uh, or ironic meaning by uh, checking the deep, the, the high distances be before uh, languages uh, such as hashtag uh, and uh, emojis and text. But we couldn't work on uh, irony uh, cues uh, just working on, on texts. Oops. So. Uh, coming back to the first question uh, that regarded the way in which uh, <laughs> yeah, the way in which uh, um, then uh, words are uh, the, the polarity of words is computed in uh, real text occurrences. Uh, we had we have uh, lists of words annotated and the word with prior polarities. So. Uh, in the dictionaries, the polarity assigned to words are uh, assigned before uh, the words are insert inserted in, in, in any context. So when the context of words uh, affects the polarity of uh, or the prior polarity, we take into account some uh, uh, linguistic devices that we call um, contextual balance shifters that um, affect the polarity of words. So we have a system of rules 
that uh, uh, top down uh, investigate the uh, possibility of world occurrences and establish uh, the final score that um, a sentence could, uh, could have. Uh, then I will explain uh, this better later, um, showing uh, uh, some example. But basically, the, it works uh, like that. We obviously take uh, into account the syntactic context, context and then uh, the discourse context, and also the mm -hmm. domain and the topic context. That Okay, uh, significantly. Last... Uh, okay, uh, no, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, it's clear. Um, uh, just a uh, dub. Uh, um, yeah. uh, all uh, all words are scored uh, manually or uh, just known uh, or uh, objectives and uh, uh, the cor uh, the correct the correctly word is um, is scored automatically. Uh, a part of the dictionary has have been uh, then the rest of the dictionary uh, inherited the polarity of the words which are morphophonologically connected to the words which have been manually annotated. So we used we ex exploited the um, the morphology issues in order to to derive the the scores of other words. So basically, we have uh, uh, four four thousand uh, uh, objectives from which we uh, in, we enlarge uh, the dictionary uh, in mente. For example, um, bel, um, bravo. Uh, no, it, it is not a good example. Uh, sereno. And then, uh, which is an adjective, uh, which is uh, annotated with the score plus two. Uh, from uh, its uh, morphological relation with the adverb serenamente, we inherited the, the polarity of the adverb by uh, computing the morphology of the, of the adverbs. It's perfectly clear. Thank you. Um, in liter order, uh, approaches, which uh, are mostly uh, based on thesaurus-based on thesaurus -based approach, uh, above all, uh, WordNet. So uh, basically, they use uh, a small uh, set uh, of, uh, of uh, polarity uh, annotated uh, words, um, which are uh, called uh, seed words, and then uh, they use uh, 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 the semantic relations of the we instead uh, propagated uh, the polarity using the morphological relations uh, relations of the of the words or uh, there are other methods we, who use uh, corpus based approaches in which they uh, compute the the polarity of the words which occur in the same context uh, by uh, stating that if uh, two words appear in the same context, uh, they could be uh, similar also in terms of meaning. So there are, uh, these are the three uh, approaches that uh, have been used in nature in order to, to populate uh, the resources. Because as, as we anticipated, the, the annotation of, the, of an entire dictionary can be uh, very time consuming. So uh, the better way uh, to, to work for us, it has been uh, just annotate a, uh, um, an half of the dictionary uh, manually and then propagating the uh, the scores using uh, uh, automatic tools. Why we choose why we choose uh, morphology in order to uh, derive the meaning uh, of uh, of the words? Because this way we can um, 
anticipate the effect that morphology can have uh, on words. In which sense um, the the meanings are not just uh, are not just inherited by the words, but we take into account the different effects that the uh, the the, morph the morphemes can have on the words. So, which are these effects? Uh, reversing, uh, in which uh, in the cases in which the affixes uh, change the semantic orientation of the original word, such as such happens, uh, for example, in negation. Uh, we take into account intensifying uh, effect. Uh, the score is uh, stronger in positive or in negative terms. Uh, we take also into account uh, the cases in which the uh, the scores are weakened, are downtoned. So basically, um, there are uh, what we can call uh, morphological context on balance shifters, which can affect the the original uh, polarity of words, just as happens uh, in, with the syntactical morphology, uh, with syntactical contextual balance shifters. In this slide, uh, we uh, present uh, the numbers, some numbers about the, the dictionary expansion, the dictionary population. So we started from uh, 4,000 uh, entries, adjectives, of sentiment, and that we derive uh, 3,200 3, adverbs in mente, which corresponds to the adverbs in uh, Lee form in English, and uh, 3,500, more than 3,500, uh, the adjectival nouns of quality. So we used the adverbs, we located the adverbs and the nouns which were uh, connected to adjectives. Obviously, uh, these, uh, this kind of research uh, have been manually checked in the end. So, in this slide we present the rules that we used in order to uh, derive such, uh, such adverbs, uh, which, as we can see, are uh, based on the theoretical uh, linguistics issues. Uh, these rules are put into uh, a morphological graph who systematically uh, reads the dictionary uh, and then according to the, uh, the, the constraints that uh, it founds uh, on the on the dictionary uh, descriptions, it um, uh, modify and attributes uh, specific uh, um, specific uh, labels to the uh, to the adverbs which are uh, inherited uh, from the uh, polarity of the of the adjectives. An example is um, made up here with uh, the the word incantevole, enchanting, in which uh, after uh, a basic uh, modification of the word, uh, it is possible for the diction, for the grammar uh, to uh, enrich the dictionary uh, also in terms of polarized adverb. Um, differently, uh, the nouns, the quality, the quality nouns uh, don't have just one uh, suffix, uh, as happened for uh, the adverbs. So we have to we had to build a dictionary of suffixes, which were connected uh, systematically to uh, inflectional rules, uh, which we. Uh, which are the, um, the codes associated to the property F and X in the dictionary. Uh, and then using uh, a grammar that uh, resembles the one we used for the adverbs, it has been possible to uh, derive the, the quality nouns. Quality nouns basically uh, are the nouns 
the, the let us treat as entities the were by the, the basic uh, uh, the base objectives um, um, it, it non uh, we cannot uh, always say that uh, the polarity of the resulting known of, of quality is the same of the base objective there are cases in which it is confirmed and cases in which uh, the suffixes add uh, to, to the result word. Examples are uh, the suffixes edine, edine that um, affect the polarity of the adjective, making the quality known, um, assume a, a weakly negative score, minus one. Example is uh, the, the, the known romanticheria uh, from the adjective. So while the adjective is uh, weakly positive, uh, the known derived using the suffix is uh, basically uh, weakly negative in Italian. So um, differently, again, from uh, verbs, uh, the precision produced by uh, each suffix uh, is uh, a bit different. There are um, suffix that produce very low uh, precision, but due to very high, uh, very high productivity, uh, it was impossible to be excluded by by the resource. But um, if we just look at the um, the, the total precision, we can see that the uh, results were were very. Uh, resource of uh, we think that a resource of this kind able to uh, take into account the uh, different influences that uh, the suffix can have, suffix and prefix can have on the starting word, words of the base word. It's very important. So uh, we analyze it, um, special tags. We attribute a special tag for, uh, in order to take into account this, uh, this different um, influence that the prefixes and, suffix and suffix suffixes can have. Uh, we also take uh, into account the, the cases in which uh, suffixes uh, or uh, prefixes can negate the, uh, the polarity of the starting words. Uh, the fact that the um, modified word uh, discovered in, the, in our um, general dictionaries are very low uh, show the importance of uh, a tool, uh, a morphological semantics tool able to uh, analyze words uh, through morphology issues. Um, because uh, this way we can also compute words which are not contained in the dictionary. Uh, the evaluation of the lexical resource population is uh, uh, reported in, uh, in this slide. So, Let's uh, uh, let's start to the discussion. Uh, let's regard the contextual balance shifter in um, the syntactic uh, in this in in the syntactic uh, sphere. So, which are contextual valence shifter? We um, describe them uh, as uh, linguistic devices, which uh, have the power to to modify the priority of words uh, in uh, when in the cases in which they they occur in the same context. So, uh, again, it is important to distinguish uh, from clear polarity and semantic orientation. Uh, the first concept refers 
to the individual world context, which is independent from the from the real text of currencies. Semantic orientation instead uh, makes reference to the um, uh, to the polarity of the sentences and texts. So uh, it takes into account the the syntactic and textual context of the words. But um, which was our methodology? Um, in order to put our sentiment word in context, so uh, therefore finding the semantic orientation of sentences which are written in uh, natural language, we used a grammar net, always in the form of finite state automata, uh, in which uh, uh, the polarities are, and uh, uh, adjectives, nouns and verbs are treated separately in four dedicated metanodes. Uh, the sentiment pattern instruction and annotation then uh, is performed using, using six different metanodes, which are uh, enclosed in every metanode of the main graph. So each uh, metanode, uh, the one connected to adjectives, the one connected to adverbs, uh, each one of them contain those uh, uh, six metanodes uh, presented in this slide, which corresponds to the six uh, that goes from minus three uh, to two plus three. Uh, basically, in this work, metanodes, uh, embedded graphs, uh, work as boxes for the sentiment expression, which receives which receives the same label if they are embedded in the same sentiment box. So in this work we considered uh, as contextual balance, uh, contextual balance shifters negation intensification. So let's see uh, just a few examples in order to clarify our our, our method works. So uh, as exemplified in the following sentences, negation indicators uh, not always change the sentence polarity in its positive or negative counterparts. They instead often have the effect of increasing or decreasing the sentence score. That is why we prefer to talk about balance shifting rather than switching. Uh, in the sentences here presented in this slide, we can see that uh, negation uh, has uh, uh, very differentiated uh, influences on uh, different words. Uh, in order to, uh, to take in, uh, negation into account, uh, we um, listed uh, dictionaries of uh, negative negation indicators and then we uh, located and then we analyzed the co-occurrences of negation indicators and uh, intensifiers and then um, sentiment polarized words and then we computed uh, the the rules uh, which uh, um, investigate the uh, different modification of the prior polarities when the context of negation occur with different polarized words. Um, as far as intensification uh, is concerned, and, uh, we combined the grammar of the words belonging to the strength scale with the sentiment words listed in the evaluation scale. And, uh, uh, in general, uh, as we can see in this slide, adverbs intensify or attenuate adjectives, verbs and other adverbs, while uh, uh, the adjectives modify the intensity of nouns. Um, as far as uh, um, syntactic uh, intensification is concerned, uh, we noticed that uh, the repetition of more than one negative or positive word of 
positive word and the use of absolute superlative affixes affects the words. A word that uh, uh, at first glance uh, seemed to be uh, an intensifier, but that uh, a deeper analysis reveals is, is negative attitude is the word troppo. Uh, it is uh, an excess quantifier that means too much. And uh, uh, we noticed that uh, in our corpus um, turns the 84% of the patterns into negative uh, expressions. So we uh, did not treat it uh, as a, an intensifier, but we inserted it into a dedicated meta node. Uh, which uh, uh, works differently from uh, uh, other other intensifiers. And uh, uh, similar things happens also with the word uh, poco. That means not much. Uh, when it when it appears with uh, uh, positive adjectives, and uh, in the 86 percent of its occurrence of, of its occurrences uh, uh, evaluated on a corpus of uh, um, of uh, review, uh, it converted its patterns into weakly negative expressions. So we treated it uh, separately, just as the um, the, the word "trop." Uh, we took into account also modality. Uh, we considered modal verbs occurring with an imperfect tense, which can turn a sentence into a weakly negative one when combined with positive words. <coughs> also conditional particular impact on the opinion polarity, especially when uh, the mod we especially when used with uh, modal verbs. In such cases, uh, as exemplified here, um, in the sentence, uh, um, the sentence polarity is always negative. And uh, we observed it uh, in the totality of the cases in, in, uh, in our corpus. So uh, we uh, focused also on uh, comparative sentence mining. Um, we considered uh, uh, in this regard, in this work, um, the, uh, the already mentioned comparative frozen sentences, some simple uh, comparative sentence that involve uh, the expression uh, better or worse than or superior to or less than and uh, the comparative superlative that confers the, to, to the first term of the comparison the higher polarity score so it always increases the strength of the opinion thus uh, as we can see in, the, in uh, this example, um, the polarity of, uh, of it is always uh, minus three or plus three, uh, therefore the, the most intense one. Okay, as regards, we can say um, that um, uh, the hashtag protesting in sentiment analysis is particularly challenging, um, especially in terms of word segmentation. Firstly, uh, the absence uh, of white spaces between words poses several problems that regards, above all, ambiguity. The solution proposed in literature uh, concern mostly the use of uh, engrams, uh, syntactic complexity, uh, pattern length, uh, post tagging. Um, in uh, in our work, um, we uh, proposed a method that all these issues together and works um, always using uh, local grammars in the form of a finite state automata. Differently from uh, finite state automata uh, dedicated to just to syntax or, or just to morphology, um, the finite state automata of um, that uh, are able to to treat hashtag um, mix both morphology and syntax. Uh, 
uh, in order to obtain the results, uh, how they work. Uh, while syntactic uh, put uh, words into the, the nodes, uh, the morphological finite set automata put uh, characters into the nodes. Uh, the, the finite set automata used to treat hashtag instead uh, put characters into the nodes. So they are basically normally. But then in the constraints, uh, they check that each node corresponds to a special uh, part of speech that must be uh, controlled in the dictionaries. So, for example, the, the finite set automata that is reported in this slide uh, allow the recognition and the automatic annotation of, the, of, of, of sequences that include uh, nouns, pronouns, prepositions, and nodes. So uh, the system starts uh, to check uh, if uh, if a substring of the of the hashtag correspond to a whole word uh, included in the dictionary. Uh, if the if the entire if the entire sequence is unknown, then it starts the structural analysis of the of the hashtag. So each substring, according to specific pattern, in this case NPN, known proposition known, um, the system checks if uh, in the dictionary there are uh, effectively nouns, prepositions, and nouns contained in the hashtag. Uh, when the structural, um, if the system produces more than one interpretation, so uh, when there are uh, hashtag, which uh, the preferred uh, annotation uh, is the one corresponding to the, the uh, in which the constituents have a longer length and the smallest number of constituents. In this case, in this case, uh, the first one. Um, when uh, the system decompose uh, the, the pattern into constituents, it uses a, a grammar net of uh, uh, fan morphosyntactic grammars, uh, of which uh, the one represented here represents just a very small part. And uh, these grammars are, are applied uh, simultaneously, but they have different uh, priority assignments. In this way, the selection of the most probable sequence is decided upstream. Um, if the system does not uh, make any sequence, uh, then it, it activates uh, a less complex and less precise tagging, which, however, uh, allows to reach a, a higher level uh, of performances in terms of recall. But just if used in combination with the evaluation of the length of the hashtag, and uh, the oriented word located in it. Uh, we, were, we refer to the length of the hashtag with the HL, and uh, we refer to uh, the oriented word uh, located in it with uh, WL. This leads to a substantially uh, identical score of the structure parsing. Uh, we have so the, the same F score uh, confirming the need to use both methodologies. In this case, too, it is necessary to follow a priority criterion which favors the most detailed and precise analysis, namely uh, the one based on the structure. Uh, 
so the child of uh, the influence, uh, the influence of uh, uh, the length uh, of the hashtag and uh, the oriented word located the uh, length are shown in the table uh, in the table below. Uh, here it can be seen that the system produces more, uh, most of the annotation errors uh, when the length of the hashtag is very high. And when the, the words uh, from the sentiment lexicon uh, uh, contains less scars. Uh, but uh, uh, the words uh, with this characteristic uh, ensured uh, anyway satisfactory performances and motivated the, ne the need to add this length related criterion in uh, the tagging uh, based on the lexicon of, uh, of sentiment, uh, which uh, if used alone would have uh, worsened the, the accuracy of the, of the system. Um, but let's talk about uh, the importance of emojis in sentiment analysis. In the last year, in fact, uh, the way to communicate online uh, involves um, involved many kinds of languages connected to verbal and uh, nonverbal futures. Uh, this complexity uh, makes classical textual analysis less adequate to have a real and representative perspective on people's interests and opinions. And in particular way, the conventional approaches uh, seem mm, not to be suitable for visual social media, such as Instagram, in which all the languages are involved and uh, images seem to be dominant. In fact, while the oriented words located into captions and hashtags uh, respectively, respectively covers the 60% and the 9% of the full words containing in the posts, the sentiment labeled emoji covers the 90% of the total numbers of emoji in the corpus. Um, in our work, uh, emojis are treated through uh, the analysis of the uh, hexadecimal codes in UTF-8 uh, encoding. Uh, basically, uh, the translated descriptions of the emoji have been passed and annotated through uh, labels that specify the proper speech, the semantic orientation, which can be positive or negative, and the distributional classes to which uh, the, the emoji belongs. Examples are uh, human, uh, body parts, uh, food, and uh, the same classes have been used also uh, for the classification of the entities represented in the images and uh, also in texts as well. Example in, in which the semantic and syntactic information explained are reported in the table uh, presented in this slide. But what happened to sentiment analysis performances uh, when including hashtags and emojis in the investigations? Uh, basically, each scores, uh, each score uh, reached by the three languages taken into account, namely text, hashtags, and emojis, are weighted according to the assumption that the euphoric level of emotional sentiment is higher than the hashtag one, and both are higher than written text one in general. According to these results, we propose this weighted average formula in which emojis, hashtags, and texts have different weights, respectively 33, uh, 50, and uh, 100. As a matter of fact, it is more common uh, the use of positive emoji with respect to response. Uh, moreover, it has been observed a poor correlation between the perceived emotional uh, polarity of emoji and the accompanying linguistic text alone. It is actually uh, challenging to predict the, the interaction between emoji and text. Uh, in fact, there are cases in which the emoji expresses or reinforces the sentiment of the text 
with which they occur and cases in which they modify or even express an, an, op an, op an opposite emotional state, as we uh, said about uh, sarcastic or ironic uh, cases. Hashtags instead are conventionally used in two ways. Uh, on one end, they describe the contents in lists of words. And uh, to the other hand, uh, for they are used to, for, for strategic purposes in order to place the images into useful and uh, uh, meaningfully uh, thematic spaces. Um, at the same time, the hashtags are also used as part of the messages in substitution of words. So they just have to be included in the final measure, but not probably with the same relevance of the captions. We tested on our corpus the manually evaluated performances of emoji, hashtags, and texts as an indicator for sentiment analysis purposes. A lot and combine it one another. We verify that, uh, that a significant improvement in terms of document level precision uh, it can be written when the indicators are considered together. If compared with the precision of text, hashtag, and above all uh, emojis, if considered in isolation. In general, we verified that the performances of our method produced satisfactory results uh, in the sentence level analysis of the text. Uh, but how we use the images? Uh, basically, all the pictures published on May 4, May, 20, uh, May um, 18, and June 3 with the hashtag under tutto bene have been collected with a custom python script that simulate the human navigation um, basically we don't provide an algorithm to analyze the images but we adopt the automatic translation from the social media algorithm designed uh, passing the htm code html code on the instagram web interface the metadata involved is the accessibility caption. Uh, this has re these are a list of words hierarchically distributed that let us define and observe subjects and attributes of the images in addition to allowing the analysis of, uh, of the entities. Accessibility captions have been clustered uh, on two dimensions, uh, human and not human, and indoor or outdoor, previously uh, defined thanks to a list of coherent words after um, matched by a pattern matching fuzz. For instance, in the human cluster, we have grouped uh, uh, all the accessibility caption containing words such as people, man, woman, person, uh, and uh, uh, in the outdoor cluster, for example, we have grouped together all the picture um, with the described word such as sea, skyland, uh, beach, and uh, geographical coordinates set the images on a specific point on the map. So it has been necessary to make a reverse geocoding procedure to find out uh, region and province levels. Uh, this process has been possible into an automatic way uh, by adopting the Python library reverse geocoder. After this step, images are ready to be analyzed uh, through NLP procedures and mapped with geographical visualization techniques, uh, observing them um, on the desired time, time frame. Uh, for a complete observation of the analysis process and of its results, uh, we developed uh, a data visualization dashboard. In the following dashboard, uh, it is possible to observe uh, the sentiment analysis on each language process uh, to investigate the different trends uh, during the day and uh, uh, the single day, hour by uh, hour. Um, adopting the cluster 
uh, detected into the images, a system of filters let us focus the results basing on the subject depicted. On the right side on the, of the dashboard, a map shows uh, the geographical situation merging the four centimeters uh, into a single one uh, weighted average. We um, refer to the weighted average and by coloring the regional shape uh, on chromatic scale from minimal from minimum value uh, minus three is this represented in orange to the maximum value of plus three in blue. Uh, as we can see uh, the Italy seems to uh, cast studying uh, with a fully uh, positive view, but as we uh, said, the geographical and dimension is very important in order to observe the different kinds of languages in 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 the in the online conversation. Uh, through an overlay function, moving the cursor on the map, uh, it is possible to show the geographical data in the deeper level of the single province, focusing uh, on each region. Uh, the result is a possible different polarity value between different provinces. Uh, for instance, on May 4, in the, the provinces of Orissa in Sardinia, and the sentiment value is negative, despite the positive average value in the region. However, in the average sentiment value over the three days analyzed, uh, it always positive, with a different evidence on regional and provincial scale. The same scale uh, is applied on the line uh, that we can see in this line on the left, in which each line is related to the vertical axis and colored and described before. Uh, lastly, a user can explore the results focusing on one or more region through a filter function, clicking or, or basically selecting. And uh, all the filters are interdependent. So it is possible to select all the functions available, investigating the phenomena from all the possible perspectives. Uh, Virus caused a series of uh, unpredictable changes narrated on Instagram through the hashtag Andrea Tutto Bene. Working on multiple levels, the, the research has offered a general and local view of the emotions told during the lockdown period, starting from a lexical buzz made up with a list of words and using electronic dictionaries also for the images. The analysis organized a large amount of data developing a real map of emotions and needs expressed during the first wave of pandemia. Uh, it can be visualized through a dashboard uh, letting user, users observe uh, general and local reactions down to the single province. Uh, the emotional effects of sense have been evaluated thanks to a polar and unique measure. In the end, did everything go well for Instagram Italy? Uh, in general, it, it seems so. The average sentiment value over the three days analyzed is always positive with little variation of regional and provincial scale. Going, going down to the single province, we can find differences as uh, we shown in Sardinia. Uh, through the quantitative and qualitative analysis of the different expressive forms used on Instagram, uh, the works proposed a general view uh, of uh, COVID uh, in Italy. The research uh, brought together linguistic analysis and design into a more general semiotic work. It was in fact to put in shape the pandemic phenomenon uh, through a selection of linguistic uh, relevance. Thank you for the attention. Uh, here you can find you. Uh, some reference to the work uh, discussed uh, so far. Thank, uh, thank, thank you. you to you. Laura, thank sorry, you. I'm still the stage because, uh, because I said word you. 
Unfortunately, I must leave at five o'clock sharp because I have a telecon with one of the next speakers, and therefore I apologize for that. But I just want to thank the speaker for a very interesting, stimulating talk, which I, I'm quite sure will create not quite a few problem to the professors of the Laurea Magistral in Data Science who will be obliged <laughs> because it is a many the technicalities which uh, have been prompted by your uh, talk. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you to you. Any questions? Oh, you already made during the presentation. Okay. Thank uh, you, Siri. Can I ask you a question? Okay, yeah. Sure. Yes, of course. Uh, is there a, a tool that I can find online uh, with which I can make such an analysis? On my own? Um, uh, no. Um, it is possible to have uh, license uh, of the of the dictionaries um, and uh, the um, using uh, a tool that is called Nuj that you can find uh, just uh, uh, writing on Google Nuj Association, N-O-O-J, and you can download the, the software. Mm, but the software is a, a, just a box. So you need dictionaries and grammars to, to work on it. Um, and is the dictionary just scored or I need to do it myself? Uh, sorry, uh, the connection uh, uh, is, is the very, very... Can you repeat? Is it just scored or, or I need to do it myself? No, no, it's just scored. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to you. Thank you also by me, uh, Professor Longo. Uh, we want to close, or oh, there are uh, any other questions? Okay, okay. Uh, no other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you again, Serena. Uh, see you soon. Thank you. And thank, you. you thank, you, uh, to, uh, thank you to all of you to your attention and to um, all your participation uh, at this fourth uh, Antonio Picarello lectures. Uh, we will see in the next.